Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Let me ask you this, how do you feel when you've lost something that's really important to you? What do you do? Our story today is about losing things. It's really three stories joined together. Listen out for what gets lost and what happens next. Think about how the stories are the same and how they're different story today is who counts 100 sheep 10 coins and two sons the first part is 100 sheep 100 sheep if just a single one were lost who would notice who counted sheep anyway the man did the man had a lot of sheep 100 of them he counted them every day one two three four five six seven eight Nine, ten. He kept counting. Fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Seventy-four, seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. It took time to count. A long time. One day the man counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Then he stopped. There were only 99. He must have made a mistake. He had 100 sheep, not 99. He counted again. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Still there were only 99. One of his sheep was missing. He was responsible for all the sheep, all 100 of them. Immediately, the man went to look for the lost sheep. He walked and walked, but he saw nothing. He kept walking. He looked to the left. Nothing. He looked to the right. Nothing. He walked and he listened. Still nothing. Then he heard it. A bleating sound. Ah! He ran toward the sound, and there she was, the lost sheep. He had found her. She was too tired to follow him home, so he lifted her on his shoulders and carried her. He was so happy to have all his sheep together again that he invited everyone to celebrate. Some people said, what's so wonderful? It was only one sheep. You had 99 others. The man smiled. One sheep makes a difference. Without her, something is missing. Now my flock is complete. The second part of our story is 10 coins, 10 drachmas, 10 silver coins. Every day, the woman would count them. Then one day she counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She stopped. She couldn't have made a mistake, but she counted again anyway. Still, she counted only nine. One drachma was missing. She had lost one of her coins. The woman lit a lamp to see more clearly. She looked under chairs and in corners. No coins. She looked in cabinets and in waste baskets. Still no drachma. She took a broom and swept the floor. There were crumbs and dust, but no coin. It was her fault. She had lost the coin and now she must find it. She searched again with the light and the broom. Finally, she saw something shining and heard a bing. She looked down and there it was, the missing coin. She held the coin in her hand for a few moments and then she carefully placed it with the other drachmas. She was so happy to have all the coins that she invited the women in the town to celebrate. Some people said, what is so important? It was only one coin. The woman smiled. Just one coin matters. Without it, something is missing. 
now my coin collection is complete. The third part of our story is two sons. A father had two sons. Easier to count than ten, much easier than one hundred. One day the younger son wanted half his father's money. It would be his eventually, but he could not wait. He was restless and he wanted to travel. So the father divided his wealth in half and gave half to his younger son and half to his older son. The younger son went to a foreign land. There he had a great time doing whatever he wanted. But before long, he had spent all the money and had none left, not even to pay for food. There was no one to share even a crumb of bread with him, as there was little food in the land. The son went to work for a farmer to try to earn enough to buy something to eat. The farmer told him to go and feed the pigs. Even the pods that the pigs ate looked good. Finally, the son was so hungry and tired that he decided to return to his father. But he wasn't sure what to say. How could he tell his father? He had spent all the money. His good pants, that is, his good trousers to you and me, were torn. His shirt was stained. His fancy shoes had holes. He thought, I will tell my father that I made a big mistake. I will say that I am sorry. I will offer to work hard to earn money. The young son returned home. His hair was uncombed, his face was dirty, and his hands were covered in blisters. His father ran to greet him. He was so happy to see him that he did not care about anything else. Instead of making his son earn money for clothing and food, he gave him a new coat, new shoes, and even a new ring. Then he invited everyone to his home to celebrate. The older son was still working in the field when he heard the happy sounds of singing and laughter and smelled sweet spices coming from his home. He wondered what was happening. He stopped one of the neighbours who was heading to his house and asked, What is going on? The neighbour was surprised by the question. Don't you know that your father is making a big party for your brother to mark his return? The older brother did not know. When the father counted everyone who had come to the party, he realised that one person was missing. That person was his older son. He had forgotten to invite him. He ran out of his house to find his son. When the older son saw his father coming toward him, he turned away. He was sad and angry that no one had come to find him. His father spoke softly. Your brother has come home. I invited all our friends to celebrate with us. You must come and be glad with us. He tried to hug his son but his son folded his arms across his chest. The older son finally said to his father, I have been with you all the years that my brother has been away. I did not waste your money. I did everything you wanted me to do. I never left you, but my brother did. Then you make a big party for him. You never had one for me. You didn't even invite me to his. The father thought, I have two sons. One, two. I paid attention to my younger son, but I discounted my older son. I didn't realise that he felt lost. The father took his older son's hands in his own. Please come and join the party. I love you. All I have is yours. Come and be with me and with your brother. 
I have two sons. He counted one, and he pointed to the house where his younger son was celebrating. He counted two, and he put his arms around his older son. Without you, he said, something is missing. With you, our family is complete. I love that story. It's really a modern version of a three-in-one story Jesus told in Luke 15 about a shepherd who lost a sheep, a lady who lost a coin, a father who lost a son. I think it's clever the way the title asks the question, who counts? One answer is that the, the shepherd counts, counts his sheep. The lady counts, counts her coins. The father counts, counts his sons. They count because they care. Care about the sheep. Care about the coins. Care about the sons. But when we ask, who counts? We can also mean, who matters? What matters? So another answer is that the lost sheep counts. It matters. The lost coin counts. It matters. The lost son counts. He matters. I loved it in the last story, that both sons mattered to the father, both counted, and his family wasn't the way he wanted it, until both children were included. All the coins mattered to the lady, all her coins counted, and her collection wasn't complete, until all the drachmas were together again, and every sheep mattered to the good shepherd, Every one counted, and his flock wasn't finished until every last one was found. Who counts? God counts. The Bible tells us God has counted the very hairs on our head, because God cares about us. Who counts? We do. We matter to God. The Bible tells us God won't rest, won't be content, won't be happy until we are all part of God's family and know that we're children of God. That's something to sing and dance about. So let's do that and I'll say bye for now.